this is Esther with Discover Your Origins. In this video, we're going to take a break from looking at descendancy research and look at the new full text search by Family Search Labs. And it was announced at Roots Tech 2024 about a month ago as of filming, and it's exciting. It's a game changer. I've been watching the community, and there have been people finding discoveries that are breaking through brick walls that they have had for years. And once you see what this does, I, th I think you'll be excited and I hope you'll try it. So how do you get to it? First, you'll need to log into your account. You will need an account uh, to be able to access this. So I'm logged in and I'm on my home page and I'm going to scroll down. And it's here on the right under Family Search Labs View Experiments. And if you don't have it available, just click the try it button and it will turn on for you and then you can just click go to experiment okay once you land on this screen there's a few things to look at there's a how-to video on how to use this and then and there's a warning here that says this is in beta still it's not guaranteed um, you may encounter some errors and then you've got your search box. So the record collections that are available right now with this is the US land and probate records, Mexico notary records, and plantation records. And I'm, we're just so grateful that they added those collections first because searching land and probate records in the US can be challenging and it'd be very easy to miss things that you wouldn't necessarily know was there. If you're fortunate in the films, at the beginning of a film will be a handwritten index, but very often those only include the principal people that were part of a transaction or the probate. It would not include anybody else. So for example, in a probate, it might mention the deceased in the index, but not the children. And so you'd have to go and look and sometimes it'd be your person and sometimes it wouldn't. And so they were very time consuming to look through um, people can get very frustrated and of course you would miss things. This changes that quite quite significantly and fingers crossed that FamilySearch adds more of these types of records to this kind of search because waiting for humans to index this kind of thing would, would literally take years and require people who are very skilled at reading older handwriting. So let's give it a try. I'm going to do this uh, search here. You can see I've been doing a lot of different searches with this. I'm going to look for Tyre Snell Grove and we'll just click search. Okay, so you can see how quick that search was first off. And then on the left here are my search results. You can see my search terms are highlighted in yellow. And on the right is my search box where I can modify my search. And you, they've added this search tips here that give you the tools you need to modify your search. So if you want to exclude terms or add terms, and you can significantly narrow your search results by using um, quotation marks around your search terms. I would try your search with both uh, quotation marks and without because you will get different results. All right, so first off, the second one here was one that I was really excited to find that I had not found before. And like I said, it's because in any index I would have looked at, tire would not have been mentioned at the index, but another family member would be. So I'm gonna just go ahead and click through here. And I like to open in a new tab and leave my search results in, in one tab so I can go back and modify if I need to. Okay, now you can see why this would be hard to read and to search through because it'd be very easy for you to have tired eyes and look at this and be like, I don't know, you know, just kind of skim over it and miss the fact that tire is mentioned. And you can see here that my search terms are highlighted in yellow and I've got tire over here on the right side of this page. And what this is when I zoom in is I'm not sure if this is a will. Um, I, I think it might be, um, but it's from 1810. So the language is a little different than other wills that I've read. But this is a will for Elizabeth Snellgrove. So it says to all whom these presents 
uh, you know, you can see how it would be so hard to read it. So if you go over here to the transcription, which is what is over here on the right side of the screen, I can start here. To all to whom these pre presents shall come, I, Elizabeth Snellgrove, do send greeting. And it just kind of goes on from there. And Elizabeth is distributing property to various family members. So interesting that one, it's a woman in 1810 distributing property and two, she's not necessarily giving property to just her children, it's to also other people. So, and that's why this was kind of exciting to find because I was trying to tie or connect Ty or Snellgrove to his correct parents. And I couldn't find any documentation that directly stated his parents as his parents. But this connects him to a grandmother, from, from what I can figure. For those who's a grandmother. On this page here, the second part of this uh, document, Elizabeth is giving uh, cattle to her grandsons. So, for example, she says here, I, uh, I give and bequeath to my well-beloved grandson, Carrie Snellgrove, one white face, I think this is supposed to be heifer, to him and his heirs forever. I also give and bequeath to my well-beloved grandson, Julius Snellgrove, one heifer. And it goes on. And it doesn't directly state that Tyre is a, a grandson, but he's grouped with the other grandsons. So we've got Larkin Snellgrove, Tyre Snellgrove, Carrie Snellgrove, and Julius Snellgrove, which were all grandsons as far as I could tell. And so this was really exciting to find because it helped add evidence to the family connection. Now, once you find something like this, you can copy the transcript if you want to copy the transcript. You can attach this image page to your relative. So you could click on attach to tree and you'll go through all of the steps to attach this image to your your person and that becomes a source then that lives on that person's profile and you can add the notes of what you've read and then why you're attaching it you know that I can say well this shows that Tyre is related to Elizabeth Snowgrove who's probably his grandmother and shows that he's probably connected to the correct Snowgrove uh, father so that was really exciting to find all right so I'm going to go back to my search results. So there's some different things here that you can do. You can see that I have 40,000 possible results, which is a lot to go through, of course. And you have filters right here at the top. So you can search by record year, record type, record place, and collection. I find going to record place as a kind of a first filter the easiest. Uh, to narrow down what I want to find because I want to look in a specific location usually. Uh, so I can look and just click on United States and then uh, you can see here I'm narrowing down. I want to look in South Carolina and then you can narrow down even further by county. I'm just going to leave it South Carolina for right now but I could click on Lexington and narrow it down even further. Uh, one thing about this is that the Snellgroves were, could have been in Edgefield, Lexington, Orangeburg, and Newberry. They're all right next to each other. So I'm going to just leave it as South Carolina for right now. Click apply. And then if I need to narrow it down even further, I could. 954 is better than 40,000. And I could narrow it down even further if I wanted. By leaving the search like this, it may help uh, pull out some other snow grove things that I might want to look at. Um, so some of these I had found before, for example, this deed from 1848, I think was one I had found before. Okay, so this one was also really good to find because you can see here where it's talking about uh, land which was situated um, in the state on Beaver Dam Creek water of Saluda River that was land originally granted to John Snellgrove. And John Snellgrove is who I think is his father. And when we zoom in here, 
we can see that John Snuggle is the signatory um, and that he's witnessing to it. Um, and if we go, because this actually starts on the previous page. And I think it starts down here at the bottom. Yes, Tyre Snowgrove to UG Fraser. So this is when Tyre sells his 100 acres of land to UG Fraser. And it describes the property and who originally had it, which was John Snellgrove, who is who I thought was his father. So that was really exciting to find. And so this was added to Tyre Snellgrove's uh, profile and family search as a source to help show the connections that I had made. So that was really exciting. So you can, let me go back here. Um, continue to narrow down. You can look through these individually. And see if you can find anything else. And it's just so easy to kind of get distracted and want to look at these a little bit closer. Um, yeah, so really exciting. Now you can narrow it down. Like I said, um, you can add an additional location if you wanted. So I've already got up here. You can see this long gray box. I'm looking at South Carolina. So now I can say, oh, I want to look at Georgia. I want to see if there's anything in Georgia. And so now you can add Georgia. So now I've got Lexington and Georgia. And if I just wanted to look at Georgia now, not anymore in South Carolina, I can actually hit this X and it will update the search. And now I'm only looking in Georgia, which I don't think Tyre ever was in Georgia, so I probably won't find anything in here. But Snellgroves migrated to Georgia, and so I may find some of his children and, and whatnot in here. Okay, so now you can also click on record type. There's different ones here and record year. All right, so what are some of the caveats? Let me go back uh, and let's do a new search. So, okay. Um, I'm gonna do a search for a Susan Eaton. And yes, you can search for women. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of Susan Eans. There's like 3 million, which of course is ridiculous, right? <laughs> to be able to search, but I'm gonna look in Alabama. So I'm gonna hit Alabama here. And I wanna look in Etowah County and I'll hit apply. Okay, so first off, the thing that you might notice is that this top record here is for marriage record index. So some counties included marriage indexes in with their probate records, which is what happened with Etowah County. And so this was exciting to find because I found this other marriage here, this Susan Smith to Calloway Smith, and then she remarries to James Brannan. So she's listed on this index page twice. And then if I go down. I think the marriage book is in here somewhere. Um, and it may take a minute to look at. Oh, and one thing you can do if, if there's just too many results and you're not finding what you want right away, you can come in here and do quotation marks. So let's update my search and I got nothing. Okay. So that didn't work. So we'll just go back. And we'll search again and let's see if we can narrow down by record type. Let's look at vital records. Oh, marriage. Perfect. Apply. Okay, so these are just showing record indexes right now. And I'm pretty sure this, this will get to the actual marriage record. Okay, it's just showing the record index. Okay, so let me go back to page one. All right, so even just getting to the record index can be really valuable.
Okay, so I wanted to look at this one from Susan Eaton and Callaway Smith. And you can see here, this is an example of that handwritten index that might be at the start of a film. And you can see here, this record is going to be book two, page 70. So let's go and see if we can actually find this. So we'll go to um, the Family Search catalog. And uh, we need Etowa, Alabama. We're going to look in vital records. And we want marriage records. All right. So we know it's in book two. So it's the second film here. And this is one that we can view uh, from home, which is good. Okay, so now we've got to find page 70, which might be a little bit of a challenge. Um, you may have to kind of skip through. Okay, so here's 67. Okay, so it took me a minute to find it, but here it is. Here's Callaway Smith and Susan Eaton. And it has a marriage date, 7th of February, 1870. Um, right here is where the officials, the minister, the marriage recording, 7th of February, 1870. Now, what was cool about finding this is you notice there's this little scrap of paper that's sitting right here off to the side. So... Um, here it is, and I'll have to rotate this so you can see it. And this is very hard to read, but this was very exciting to find. It says, Mr. Jude, and I'm not sure the last name, let C. Smith have marriage license for my daughter, Susan Eaton allowed me without, I think this is concern, to something myself. This, the 6th day of February, 1870, signed Mrs. Susan Eaton. This was really exciting because one, we didn't know Susan, the mother, was still alive in 1870 and we found out that she was. It's, you know, having a daughter named Susan of a mother named Susan matches a census record that we have confirms this first marriage to Callaway Smith. There's just so many things about this that are really cool that are very exciting that we found because of the full text search and finding this image here. So, uh, there's lots of discoveries that are happening, um, that people are talking about that they're finding. And so I would encourage you to come and play with the full text search, try using the filters, try using some of the um, search parameters that are available to you there on the side and see what you can find. Um, you might be surprised of some of the things. I've, I've found a few things that help confirm some relationships that I'd, uh, surmised based on other evidence and um, just added more to it. And so um, this is my first place that I'm going very often when searching um, early uh, U.S. land records. And I, I hope you give it a try. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.